Okay, well, we have pulled out the headliner, the visors, and found out we had some little friends up in the in the roof and made nests and stuff. This was a dirty little job right here. Just pulling a headlight. And I got piles over there. Look at it. It was up in the headliner. No wonder it got moldy. And where they exactly came from, I don't know. But in addition, at the damage that's been done uh, just is not looking looking pretty and I noticed over here in passenger like it's a lot of glue so hopefully that's not ate out now I know I've had blisters in here in the past down there in the corner which windshields coming out anyway and we're gonna rebuild all that remember our roof skins coming off See. Yeah, that's what I was looking at right there. I'm going to hold this three foot light and show you right here. Oh, those are blisters. I'm sure it's through at some point. But we will find out. So. A little update on how the teardown's going. It's going quite messy. So now I got a, well, I don't have a vacuum, so I gotta get my little whisk broom and clean all this crap up. So you don't need to watch that. I'm gonna save all these old pieces just for the, uh, I guess, next person if they need a pattern. But look at all those stains in it. And the uh, little little rats running up and through there. Remember we had the same rat nest down in the rocker panels. So anyhow, moving on. Alrighty. Well, today We're trying to put the halo in for my, to finish off the halo and the A pillar down spout rail pipe, whatever it's called, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, that's basically set in place right there. And you see the distance from here. Now there's a molding that goes on here as well as you have your headliner which comes up probably right about here. Problem is, when I sit in this seat with the helmet on, it's like that, right there. There's supposed to be three, at least three inches. At least three inches. This, this isn't even three inches. So I have to somehow, and I've already called and checked to see if they had the dimensions from this side to that side over there, and they don't give you that. 
unless you call the company and maybe they will give it to you. So, and I also learned on a frame car that this bar has to be one and three quarters inches, which it is. So I've been trying to get one and three quarter inches here. Well, come to find out, if you're building the cage, then this doesn't have to be one and three quarters. It can be one and five eighths, which that's what this is. So anyhow, we're all right there. But I need to get these bars over here somewhere, which it's still not going to give me a whole lot of room. I mean, that might give me an inch, maybe, maybe two inches. So, I don't know. I, I'm at a loss at the moment. Maybe get it built somewhere else, or I'll have to uh, do some modification that I don't want to do, but basically this car is not legal as far as roll cage is concerned because this is a frame car and this is supposed to go to the frame. And I did not do that. I built it basically like a uh, unibody car or like, for example, um, a Mustang. Mustang's a unibody car, it's not a frame car. They have sub frames but they're built into the body of the car. So then you can go to the floor and that's legal. Why a frame car you have to be tied into the frame, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But the reason I'm not going to the frame is I want to take the body back off. So, you know, I want to do clean the frame up, get it all pretty painted, and then set my body back down. Well, and while the body's off, do the undercarriage of my body. <laughs> so, you know, if I, obviously if I go through the frame and weld this to the frame, I can't take the body off. I'm gonna also end up, if I were to paint the frame and then do the body and then go down through there and cut a hole through it, which I could do, but then I'm messing up the frame in that spot, in that spot, and there's no frame over there, so. Anyhow, this is the way I'm doing it. And at the local track, they don't check that anyway. So, and it's not like I'm gonna be racing in NHRA, so, yeah, you know, that's the way that is. Uh, just race it once in a while and drive it down the street and, you know, have fun with it. So, that's my dilemma as of the moment. How I'm going to approach this bar right here and make it fit. Um, another thing I'm looking at is when I had my seats in before, I had them bolted directly to the frame. Well, you can see, let me get a tape measure. I don't know why I always end up, I can find this tape measure, but I can't find the good, no, there it is. <laughs> Let's set that one over there, so then I can't find it. Didn't even have to walk around the car, it was sitting right here. So, versus them sitting on the floor, like they used to be, they are now two and a quarter inches higher than they used to be. So, which also with the headliner in and a helmet on, my helmet's going to touch the headliner. Uh, it didn't, or it barely did before, or didn't before. Uh, and then, you know, I've got a lot of a lot of distance from here to here. I may have to look into some new seats, like the aluminum seats that don't have a ton of 
padding. These are Baja seats. So, lots of things to think about and consider and do at this point. So, I just wanted to give you an update. That's where we are. And as soon as I figure it out, get back to you. Good morning. I'm back. Yeah, I'm wearing the same clothes, but whatever. I wash it, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> so, uh, made a decision on the uh, bar. I'm gonna do some modification. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, I'm gonna add two inches to this bar so it comes out to here. I've got the bar over there. And I'm going to section it in the middle. And I'm going to do very nice welds, and you won't even ever see it. So, but first things first. Um, going to get the smoker out. And uh, smoky pork shoulder. Or as they put on the label, a picnic shoulder or something. So I'm going to get this thing out and get it warmed up. Trying, trying something new and whoops, running off the curb. Trying something new and that is I've heard people using pickle brine. For their brine. Saves a lot of time. Just buy a jar of pickles and dump the brine in there and let the uh, pork sit in it for 24 hours. So as that's warming up, I'm going to go get the pork and uh, get that set on the smoker. Then we'll get back to doing something here in the shop, constructive. Um, also, I got a new tool. I want to show you my new tool. It's the same tool, but different. Uh, and that's this uh, rivet. These are steel rivets versus aluminum rivets. So I'm going to replace those other rivets that I put in for the shifter bracket. See, look at that. Ooh, pretty. Um, and see how that goes. So I'm going to grind one out and then uh, put one back in. So watch me do that, see if I can screw that up at all. But practice makes perfect and that's what we're here for. So I'm going to get the bar out, get it laid out on the flat surface as best I can, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, back out here at the smoker, and uh, I wanted to show you what it looks like after you pull it out of a pickle brine. Not a very pretty color, but it's okay, because it's going to get all brown and smoky. So we'll just put that, can't really put it this way, so we're going to put it this way. Just let that go for eight, ten hours, because it's not a very big one. So I'll let you see it when it's done, and I'll let you know how it tastes. So get back with you on that. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the roll bar out, and I have porky hands. So. Get back. Um, got the bar out. Now, what I'm doing, find a little stand to put you on. And a handy dandy ladder right here will work. So, got it on, uh, you know, fairly level surface, not really. 
because, um, you know, the bar's not perfect. I also found out that this, both bars taper a little bit, upward or downward. So yeah, I almost put the pen underneath there. Same on that side. So, when I reinstall this thing, I'm going to have to see how it fits. If I, if I want it to taper down or taper up, I don't know because, you know, they don't give you instructions on anything. So, and I don't know if that's just a mess up uh, in their part or if it's on purpose. It's awful coincidental that both pipes or both ends are ramped up like this or depending on how you put it in, ramp down. So let's get started on marking this out and we'll go from there. And hold on, my phone's ringing. Okay, I'm back. So uh, marked out my 22 and a half in roughly in the 16th. You know, how we figure that kind of stuff. Now I'm going to uh, do a little hack. See on YouTube all the time. Comes in handy when you're trying to cut a circle or a pipe. And you want a straight line. So now we just mark this all the way around. Actually, kind of did that. Kind of did that wrong, but get the idea. Um, I didn't really put it in the center of my mark, which I should have. Uh, you know, stainth isn't going to make that much difference in this case. So, so I got that marked. Could have kept my paper. All right, we'll get the grinders out. Probably move it over to the bench where I got my handy dandy other tools. And that way it keeps the mess over here by the door so then I just blow it outside. Let me get the pipe. There we go. Also, make sure I don't mess up. I'm going to mark the top of the pipe. Remember when I said that the ends were tweaked so I don't get them like this somehow? I don't know that I, I would. 
I'd have to, you know, have one this way and this way, I guess. So, anyhow, better be safe than sorry. All right. Got the grinder. Plug in the cord over here. Unplug that. Plug that in. Shield, my sleeves, my gloves, and somebody's gonna call me just as I get ready to cut this, I betcha. Why these cords get so twisted? Okay, I don't know if you saw how perfectly straight that wasn't, but it is what it is. We will fix it by welding it up. Okay, I'm going to bevel the edge a bit. Okay, well, we're all clamped up. Took me a while, but good thing you didn't get to watch that. As you can see, this is all ground down. This tube was a smidge bigger than this tube. So it kept me from being able to clamp it straight. It wobbled. Now it's not wobbly. I should be able to get a, a flush weld. So we're in within a few thousandths, I think, of where we're supposed to be size wise. So um, let's put a couple tacks on this thing and see where we are. see how thick that wall is and I know what what the thickness is but what 
don't know if it's 16 gauge or if it's because my you know my machine doesn't have 134 on it so Can't read it. I'm going to go with an eighth of an inch. That'll be nice and hot. Plus, I got a little gap going. So, we'll get some good penetration happening. You know, my batter. We don't have any problems here. <clears throat> All right, let's tack away. Turn that heat up a little bit. I like that better. Went to three sixteenths versus an eighth. Whoops. Come on. Just blowing through. The gap here. Oh, welded it to the angle iron. to the angle again. I thought that sounded funny. It was on the galvanized. That's better. Okay. I was going to use two pieces of angle iron 
but I didn't. The other piece of angle iron was not straight. And I think this will do it. I got it. Once I welded it on there, and now I have to cut it off. Yeah, that would have been good for video. stick. It's too much on the piece of angle iron, that's why. <sighs> Hope the mic's working. Hope you guys can hear me because it's really frustrating when it doesn't work. And I don't know it till I go to editing. And then there's no sound. And actually I've got background going on right here, so I gotta turn that off. And I'm thinking thinking came out uh, I mean I'll let you look at it came out pretty straight looking I think don't you think I mean looks all right even if it is a little crooked it's nothing you're gonna see because it's way up at the top of the roof. But that's okay right there, I think. Let me... I'm only clamping that so I can use my ground. So, let me put that but this time oops oh come on this is better Okay, I'm going to weld this thing, see what happens. Got plenty of penetration. Why am um, 
doing the spot weld. And flip it over. And my weld's probably just as big as on the back side of the wall. It is on the front side. And I'm good with that. Always get a little too close. Yeah, don't do that at home. So, a pair of pliers and pull it off. spot right there. She's fully welded. I'm going to come back, do some grinding, finish this thing off, make it look pretty. So I'm going to shut you off because I'm sure you don't want to watch that. What the heck is that? Oh. Something in the uh, the urethane on the floor, you go sticky rock. So, get back to you. Back, okay. What I'm doing now, and I'm gonna show you, the weld being a little hot, I got a little, and this, this bar was, the, the piece that I put in was probably a little bit tapered, but anyway, gives me those little craters along the edge and I'm going to fill that stuff in. And by doing that, I turn my heat down some, so I get a little better buildup. And then I just go along and buzz on top of those and grind it some more and we'll work it and it'll be like one smooth piece of metal. So I'm gonna do that and get right back to you. 
Okay, well, out of the uh, furnace and into the fire. While welding together, apparently my table wasn't very level as far as twist goes. So I have a small amount of twist, about this much that I need to make this bar go this way. So my little spar straightening apparatus here and good old fashioned come along. We're gonna see what happens. Hopefully, it works the first time. That's not good. And I say that's not good. I mean, this needs to be, cable needs to be in a different spot. Okay, let's let that pressure off. See where we are. Okay, new battery. So, let's uh, loosen this thing up here. See where we are. See if that did anything, anything at all. Because if it didn't, we're gonna have to really tweak the crap out of it. It did nothing. All right. I don't have much choice on how to do this. Tried putting it under truck tire, that didn't work. Tried a vise, that didn't work. I don't have enough strength to bend this thing. So, hopefully we don't just bend it this way at that. Arch, and we actually twist it, which it's asking an awful lot. And we are twisting the crap out of it. OK, 
Okay. So let me show you how how much we're twisting the crap out of it. So that sh that should be straight here, and you see where how much we've got it twisted. So. Okay, one more pull later, and we made it. See, a little gap there because the ends are bent, and a little gap there because the ends are bent. So, we got her done. Now let's get this thing mounted up inside the car, see how we uh, fits where I need to, and we'll, uh, get the cutting ends and get this thing welded in. Okay, the bar is up in, in here. Now I still haven't determined, I have the ends that they kind of slope down. So that would help tuck the front some. So anyhow, so I've got it doing, mounted that way. I'm a little too far forward, okay? And I would like to be, this to be here. So that would be an inch and five eighths. But remember, when you notch these back here, you're notching them about half the pipe thickness. So you have to allow, allow for the notch. So if I cut off and then notched, I would be even farther back. So I'm gonna cut off 11 sixteenths and then notch it. See, and that moved. And then, like I said, and then notch it. So I should this should be in this ballpark. So, bear with me on that. And uh, get it pulled back out, get it on the bench, get to cutting and notching. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back. And it's the next day. No, it's two days later. Anyhow. So, uh, I did some cutting and notching, like I said, and uh, I don't have any video of that because I don't want you to see me do that because I'm not good at it. <laughs> and I don't want to teach anybody a bad habit. Um, so, here's where I'm at. Um, I have the bar up in here, and like I mentioned before, the bar had, at the ends are up. In this case, now they're up. I had them the other way, and it wasn't fitting the way that I thought it should. Um, this way seems to be fitting better. The bar is a little more level across here. It's really nice on the other side. Uh, for some reason, this one isn't exactly the same. Uh, and we probably know why, because all the, uh, you know, things we had to do out there on the bendy, finny, pipey thingy trailer uh, to get the twist out of it. So anyhow, 
this is what this side looks like and I get a light in here and show you what this other side looks like um, little, little gap so little gap and uh, what I'm going to do is take a little more out of here which will help bring it in uh, should tighten up the back side so a little more a little more fitting and it's very time consuming in my case uh, this side fits a little better but it's the same thing on the back side a little bit uh, of a gap so we got to do the same thing here take a little bit out of here um, looks like right right in there see this this cutting this one isn't a cut and dried you know get your pipe cutter and and just run it through and boom you got a nice cut this one as you can see it's on the curve so it took a little finagling for me to figure that out and I don't have a pipe cutter anyway so I'm going to uh, get these fit fitting the way that I want them and then I'll get back to you and we'll do some welding and all that fun stuff so see you in a minute okay okay Something I really, really hate, and you can't, oh, there it is. I don't know if you can see that little reflection on the side of my finger. No, you probably can't. Anyway, it is right there, right in, I can't even see it. Anyway, right in there. When you use one of these little carbide bits, it gives you all those neat little sliver shavings and you're not wearing gloves. Mm, it's not fun. I gotta try and find that and get it out. There's several in there. My little finger my yeah, my fingertips. So we've done a little grinding on the bar. Uh, getting closer. Still need to take a little bit out of here and I think a little bit out of the top from what I can feel. We're really close and actually you know that's not bad. I can weld that. That's, that's not a problem at all. Um, anyhow. Let me blow those little metal splinters out of my finger. It sits right there. And uh, grind this a tad more up here. A tad more. And uh, get back, do ya? Back. Grinding on this side. You see that little orange, orange mark I made? Not on this pipe, but this this pipe right there. I got to take that much out of it so that the other side will fit up. So, gonna get uh, a handy dandy quad pod hold camera holder thingy, which is a ladder. And uh, maybe you can see what I'm doing for a second. Probably better on this other side. Yeah. 
Yeah, I try to make these videos shorter, but I've pretty much given up on that. Oh, um, discovered one way to help get the little metal splinters out of your fingers. This is a little 180 grit sandpaper and I just kind of gonna rub on it till it's gone or sand it off, one or the other. Either way, it doesn't stick me anymore. Then maybe it'll fester up later on and then I can get it out. Okay. Let's grind this thing again. Loosen up my Halo Holder 400. I measurement my uh, extreme tolerances right here. It's uh, finger width. So, finger width here. How did we come out? It's bigger than it's supposed to be. But, fits closer on the inside. Change one thing, it changes another. I don't know, that'll be okay. That'll be all right. See? Right there. That's good enough in my book, because I can weld that up. Back side is the same. So, all I'm gonna do right now is put a tack on that. After I get everything centered in the way that I want it, I'm gonna put a tack on it. And then we're gonna to go to these A pillars. fight with them for a few days. So, be right back at ya. Okay. I've got it held up here with my handy dandy, you know, Halo Holder 7010. Um, and looks really good. Nice and straight. Swoops up, swoops up to hit the uh, whatever bar loop. Uh, looks good that way. I've got clearance here, just enough to stick the end of my finger in. Now, Go to the other side, driver side, and looky here. I don't know if you can see where my fingers stick in, there's a gap that you can see from here to the top of the bar. And I have like all kinds of room here 
to stick my finger in because if I don't do that then this goes up like that so but matches back here so what do I do do I pull it out and try to bend it right here with a pipe bender you know how well those go because what's probably going to happen is I'm just going to crush it right here and then it's really going to look crappy see if I lift it up to where it's just a fingertip then that's what it looks like the front's good that's where it should be but it's that bow right there that is not working always something so I'm gonna ponder that for a minute See if it's uh, worth it to maybe straighten that a little bit right there or not. I probably will. So I probably screw it up and have to buy a new one. All right. See you in a minute. Okay. We, uh, yeah, I took it out. I'm going to, you know, try to bend it, you know, because that's what I do. So, I'm down here in the dungeon and uh, got the old pipe bender, got the uh, leveler uh, hooked up, the uh, Cub Cadet 1000 series, not really, it has, has nothing to do with it, it's just on a old crate. So I'm going to... Start bending on this thing and see how it fits. I'm sure if it's going to take five, six, seven hundred times to uh, get it where I want it. And I hope you don't fall off that Cub Cadet Series 1000 camera holder. <laughs> oh boy. So, it's in here correctly. I want this end to go down. I'll give it a shot. Hopefully we won't crush too much. Okay, let's check on it. That didn't do a dang thing. Ouch, rocking a knee. Hard to tell if I've done anything or not. So frustrating, you know? It's just a simple little project. Don't know how I can hold this, keep it straight. Maybe my 190 pounds will help. I doubt it. There it goes. Let's push it away. There we go faster. And let's try that. If that did anything. Um, uh, that might 
might have. Looks a little straighter. Let's go try that. Let's go see what that looks like. And the other Chevelle. Um, while I carry this back, I'll be right back. Okay. Said I got a couple small tacks on it. I'm going to put a couple more small tacks on it because I want to set the front the height that I want it. That's why I have this apparatus right here. Um, trying to get it equal on both sides and level across here as much as possible. Oh, let's stick it to it. The problem is, if I do this and it's not where I want it, I'm not going to be able to cut it off. This is the grinder. It won't fit up in there. So, wish me luck. sag but that's all right when I put the a pillar in try to make sure that I put it where I want it well I'd like to weld it but I just don't feel I should I'm gonna crawl in from the other side get another tack See me in here. Maybe you can. I don't know. See my little light flashing around. Whoopsie. Oh, yeah, I thought it bolted that thing down. It quit kicking around on me. That's the uh, seat moving. That one's nice and tight.
Okay, that's enough of that. You get the idea. Put a couple tacks on it, and we'll start the, the A pillars. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm starting on this A pillar. Here, this invisible one comes up like so, goes to there. Anyway, I marked on my A pillar bar this angle on both sides the best I could. Uh, I'm going to cut this out. I don't, I'm not going to cut all this. I'm going to cut a little at a time and see where I end up because I'm not really sure on this dealie. So a little bit of time and see where we go. And you know that little sandpaper trick I told you about? Get the metal shavings out of your fingers? Yeah, that didn't work. So all you can do now is Oh, tried and true, and just gnaw on your fingers and bite the skin off until you get the sliver out. <laughs> yeah, gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Alright, let's grind something. Pretend that this is going to fit. sitting there so kind of uh, I need that to be more straightish more straightish in that case not really really there so more straightish take out of this side, that side where the little footy is, down here, right there. Yeah, this is uh this is why I don't like this. I'm not good at it. I don't do it enough to know what I'm doing.
Hey. We can fork it, fake our way through it, can't we? this away before I break it. Just pick that up at the store. Leave it out there on that table and I'm going to smash it with something. Pretty much like I do everything else. Word to the wise, don't let me borrow your tools, because I treat them like I treat my own. Okay. <laughs> uh. Back over here, let's grab this here pipe. I'm gonna set you here. Wow, never guess you'd be able to see me at that angle. Okay. See what else is going to need to happen. But some point. I'm going to piddle with this a little more. I've got to notch this out so it fits back onto the pipe better. And uh, so I do that and I get this thing a little closer to fitting and where I can cut this off. I'll get back to you, but you get the idea. It's a tedious, long process. Hey, de ho! Good morning, I think. Yep, still morning. It's a little chilly here in Central Florida. It's a whole, uh, got down to like 40 last night. I know uh, you northern people are saying, oh, that's shorts weather. <laughs> yeah, well, I was from Mich Michigan at one point. Got news for you. It's still cold. When your blood gets all thinned out like mine, because, you know, being on blood thinner, which just aspirin, can't take that cold anymore. But anyhow, what we're doing today, continuing on the uh, halo and the A-pillar part of the uh, roll bar. I have one section. We're over here in the dungeon, if you can tell. 
Um, have one section already completed. Uh, have to bend this more. And I don't know if you can really tell that's roughly how much I have to bend it. Because I didn't like how it was fitting in the car. Basically, instead of going straight up into the halo, it went like this into the halo. So I got kind of a happy medium, more, more of a straight up and then to the halo. What are you going to do? Unless you're bending your own stuff. So uh, let's work on this a little bit. Got my handy dandy camera setter upper thingy. Put you guys up here. And uh, let's get to bending something. See how, see if we can crush this baby. And what I don't like about using this, because it's a pipe bender, it's not a tube bender, it puts little dents in it. You know, we went over this before when I was doing that back section. And I haven't, uh, not quite there, I haven't spent the money to get a tube bender because, again, this isn't what I do every day. But it'd be nice to have one. Seems like an awfully long way to go. Took me three or four times to get this other one done. Probably more like six or eight, ten times. I had some nice music for the background. There, bada bing ish. Bada bing ish. Yep. That's it. I'm stopping. That's where we are. Right there. This back in. Can. Now the difference between a tube bender and a pipe bender, pipes are usually a little thicker walled so they won't crush in your bend. We can kind of get away with this, don't really like it, but it's all I got so that's what I'm going to use. So. Let's get on out of here. Figure out how we're gonna cut these ends since now they're just the opposite of the other side. And it's getting warm enough. I'm gonna be stripping my little flannel off here shortly. Okay, I'm going to do some uh, figuring and I'll be right back. Okie dokie. Um, yeah. Plug in cutoff grinder. 
change out my disc. That's a little uh, funky looking right there. Okay, all I'm doing is rough cutting. I'm not trimming anything yet. Uh, just mark the line, mark the line, and that is all we're doing because this will take eight, three, four, ten thousand times for me to be able to cut this. I'm going to have to move you in this direction and out of the light. There we go. So. This. Not even close to being nice and square. Oh well. Doesn't matter, it's all getting trimmed off anyway. to come off and get out my new pair of gloves glue the fingers out of these right here I'm sure this one won't last long either but that's what they're for I'm getting a bunch of little sheet metals not sheet metal little metal slivers I'm sure you can, maybe, you can see all the little sparklies, sparklies, yeah, right there, there. It sucks when they end up in your fingers all the time. So, let's go see how this fits. <laughs> anyway, it's not going to fit, obviously, but... Figure out what ends what. I think it's this one. Goes here. Somewhere. Uh, sorry.
Okay, well, like I said, I mean, nothing's gonna fit, but we want that up on that pipe, and that somewhere in there. So, we're gonna go back to the other pipe. And again, I'm not good at doing these at all. <laughs> it takes me forever. But this is how this one fits. Let me, uh, let me hold this in place. That's how that one fits, right there. Down this way, I don't like that coming into the windshield, but really don't have any choice because it's got to hit there in the loop. Comes down fairly straight, may have to trim the dash a tad, and that's how I want it to fit. Uh, that's so I could get that fairly straight up and down, which I know it's not, but it used to be like that. And yeah, okay, that, that would clear the dash, but I didn't want it like that. I wanted it a little more straight up and down. I can massage that dash a little bit, and I gotta figure out if I'm gonna do a crossover between the two, where I can put it to where it's not intruding. So. Let's take this over here. I know everything's just the opposite. But if this can get me somewhere close, and it's hard to do this one-handed. just the opposite. Big time, just the opposite. Okay, so that's the opposite. That's the opposite. You know, if you can see down there, let me get my light. Stay. That's the opposite. So, and I understand, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. But if I'm trying to get somewhere close, got to remember that so I don't cut it exactly the same as the other one. And then I've messed everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stare at this for like 13 hours and see how I can use this pattern, the one that's already cut, to get me really close on the other one. And I'll get back to you. I'm back. And mic's on, mic's on, okay. What I did was lay these pipes down one on top of the other. And then traced one side. And then, for example, if this one was on this side, like this, 
I traced that side. Then I took this pipe, put it on this side, and traced that side. Same thing with this up here. So traced that side on this side of the pipe, and this side on this side of the pipe. So they're opposite. Now, well, am I going to just hack that right off? No, I'm not going to do that because, you know, it's not going to work. <laughs> so um, I'm going to probably cut roughly from here, cut that out, leave me plenty of space. Same way here, just little pieces at a time, fit it, see where I'm at and slowly work my way in and make it fit. But this at least gives me a close reference. So I'm going to uh, do that real quick or start on it. see where we are. Keep our fingers crossed. Okay, with where this pipe's fitting, which is on the curve, the bend, uh, that's distorted. It's not the same as this pipe. This kind of gives me a close reference, um, but we'll see how it fits when I install it over here. See how bad we messed this up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't think we messed it up. We're just, we're just fitting. That's all we're doing. Probably cut the wrong end. What do you think? Show you. We're in the ballpark. We've got to cut that other side more. But first off, I'm going to come down here and I need to check something. And this shouldn't matter. is the length. Something looking funny. 
already. I don't even know which way I'm pointing you. There. Looks about the same, but not quite the same. So. Keep in mind, I'm this far off of what I traced. So let's see. On the other side, oh, I'm that far off. I'm way, way off anyway. So, let's, um, how are we down here on this cut? Is this cut going to work? It should. Again, small little bits at a time. Gonna make this cut. We'll go back, see how that fits. Battery may run out by then. No, nope, not quite right. Um, Falls. Ba -na 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 -na. Gotta come way forward. This pipe should be here. We got a lot of cutting to do. And that's nowhere near it should where it should be. It should be up here. So little by little, sliver by sliver, anyway. I'm going to work on that and it's going to take me a little while. So you don't need to watch all that, but you get the idea. So I'll get back to you when I get it cut. Okay, back. Well, we're on the passenger side. Um, what I had to do was a little modification to my dash 
I don't know if you can see that little bit of a gap that I got because uh, that it curved the dash curved out so this was bumping the dash and not giving me a straight gap up through here now it's bumping the pad I'm fine with that because I have my gap so that bars tacked in so we're gonna go to the other side this pole is great until it's not and I don't know why these grinder cords get so dang twisted anyway there iron to the other side so where we are here here um, let's see let's see if you can see anything hopefully you can All right do the best we can so we've got this pipe all cut ta-da and fitted ta-da might, might grind that just a little bit more so hmm Not an octopus, you can't hold everything at one time. So, it's that one. And that one. And, well. <laughs> try this again. When I straighten this up, well, I can't show you and hold this and make it work. So just take my word for it. Right here, it hits. Right there. When I get everything lined up the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm going to grind this out right here. What I did was, I'm going to mark that. So I'm going to take my grinder and just grind this until it goes through the metal, which it'll be about so long. Then I'll cut a little patch and weld that in. So let me get. A boob cut. Something. A ladder. Set you up over here. Okay. Okay, get my gloves on. Blue bays.
Okay, that should be better than the other side. Basically, I've just ground the metal so thin and I created a hole. Now we'll patch that hole. Not quite long enough. I have more metal. I think so. Okay. I hate these shears. They're dangerous. When I was high school, I cut the crap out of myself. And that's the scar right there. and push and that's when you get in trouble with these Doesn't have to be a perfect fit. Because it's all kind of curved and rounded. As long as I get it welded in good. And ground back down. It'll be good. fits that way better. So go to this side. So, you know, all I wanted to do was put in a halo and a couple of A pillars and whatnot. Here we are modifying the dash. And you know, if I'd have left them going like this, 
wouldn't have to do this, but I didn't like it that way. So who knows? Probably mess things all up somehow. Round these little critters off. I think that'll do me. Get my handy dandy little body hammer. Do a little shape shifting. Make this fit just a tad better. Yeah, that's not working. Needs to be a little skinnier. Okay. All right. Let's throw a tack on there. Bad boy. Close your eyes. Wrong helmet. Okay, I'm gonna finish welding this in there. And then uh, come back grind it smooth and show you what that looks like. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back and yeah, you're on. Okay, so got this all welded in. Now I'm gonna grind her down. You can't see what's happening, but I'm going through on that piece of metal. So I need to come along and fill this in. Oh, I've got some metal there to work with. And for those of you that don't have a little spotlight on your helmet, get one. 
is I can't get this positioned where I want it. But this, boom, right where I want it. Sorry about the butt shot. It's got a couple little pits in it. But There you go. Now you can't see them. And I got good room between there. Good idea. Good. Anyway. anyway. All we needed. All right. I'm going to turn the welder up. Now, hopefully I can hold this and pack it just like the other side. All right. I hope.
Ugly tack. Not gonna work. Knocked my light off. A little better. I'm gonna have to grind that. Oh, oh wonder one. Other tack out. I don't like it. Okay. That is tacked. It is, golly, these dang legs. Okay, so that's how much room I have through there. That's good. It's touching up here, no big deal, don't care. Probably make a big squeaky noise all the time, but I'm sure that I won't hear it over my motor, so. And yeah, those fall off. Actually, what that is, that light, is one of those headband lights. Um, just take it off, screw it into your helmet, and it works. But don't try to pick up your helmet by the light because you rip it off. All righty, folks. That is a Halo A pillar tacked in place. Much straighter than what they wanted it to be. Like I said, they wanted it about this angle, or that's how they had it bent. And I did not like that. Don't know what, if that mattered. Have no clue. Because, you know, there's no instructions. But they're both the same. The gap on this side. Yeah, a little thinner because I, I should have taken it up higher. But I learned my lesson on this one and did it on that one. But everything's good. So, halo. And remember, we had the section. Um, now I'm debating about the cross piece and where to put that. Maybe that's another video. See you next one.